What's up, family? Welcome to Love, Samantha Lee, the More Than Just Pretty podcast. I'm your host, Samantha, and here we explore love, life, spirituality, and relationships through the lens of real beauty, the kind that begins the moment you decide to be unapologetically yourself. Join us as we dive into a heartfelt discussion that will challenge, inspire, and connect us. Are you ready to embrace your true self? Let's begin. What's up, family? Um... Y'all, tonight is an interesting one because normally I don't record these at night and normally um, I don't do it in this this space that I'm doing it in. But I was uh, just admittedly, I was on my way to work this morning and um, I saw a voice note that I had on my phone that I had recorded for me to play during a hard time. And something prompted me to listen to it. And I listened to it. And it was, I saw originally it was like eight minutes long. I'm like, I don't want to listen to this for eight minutes. I'm not sure what I'm going to say. And when I tell you guys, when I played that eight minute clip, it felt like two. Um, it absolutely shifted my perspective and it inspired me. So I want to share it with you. Um, what it started with is me sharing verses, verses from a hard place, verses from a hard place. I, I, I wanted to entitle this something different. I'm not going to lie. I've been playing with titles and had different concepts, but today's message, what I listened to, I needed to hear it. And I think that somebody else that's listening to me needs to hear it too. So I'm going to start off with the one thing that I know gets me out of a dark place. So let me read some verses, principles that I believe that when we when we speak scripture, the, the spirit, the Bible is the sword of the spirit. And a lot of times we neglect the power of speaking word over ourselves. And y'all, I'm not gonna lie, I was in a, I was in a dark place. I was discouraged. I was not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Y'all have been there with me. Where it's very hard to see where God is at. You very, and you have to remind yourself of the things that God has done. And you have to almost, you have to be hyper intentional in those moments because it just seems like you, there's a dark energy that wants to just overtake that moment. So I'm going to speak some spirit because, or I'm going to speak the sword of the spirit because I believe that that's actually how you get out, out or begin to get out of a dark place. In John 16, 33, it says, in the world you have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Isaiah 41, 10 says, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold, uphold you with my righteous right hand. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Psalms 34, 4, 5, and 8 says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all of my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces will never be ashamed. Oh, and taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that for, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. All things work together for good. All things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Joshua 1, 9 says, I have not, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord, your God will be with you wherever you go. Matthew 6, 31 through 34 says, so do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your father, your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean into your own understanding. In, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Isaiah 54, 17 says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Every voice raised to accuse you will be silenced. These are the benefits that are enjoyed by me. The Lord has spoken. Well, I, listen, y'all, you can tell I've learned how to personalize it. 
But these are the bins that will be joint, that will be enjoyed by you. The Lord has spoken. First Corinthians 2, 9 says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Ephesians 3, 20 says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all that we could ever ask, think, or imagine, according to the power that is at work within us. Romans 15, 13 says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and all peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Philippians 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, and 4 says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Isaiah 41, 13 says, for I, the Lord, your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not. I am the one who helps you. First Peter 5, 6, and 7 says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties upon him, because he cares for you. Revelation 21, 4 says, You will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said this, Behold, I am making all things new. Family, I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're struggling with. And y'all, if I'm being honest, I'm in the boat with you. But I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. It won't be long now. God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. God is doing a new thing in this season. And y'all, honestly, it feels so much harder on the brink of a breakthrough. We just got to keep pushing. We just got to keep going. We can't allow the moment to overtake us. The issue is that sometimes when we are in our feelings and we're sad and there's not much that we're seeing in our vision that makes us hopeful, it's very easy to get caught up in what we see and forget that there is something simultaneously working while we don't see it. I know that God is sovereign family. I know that God is intentional. I know that even if we don't see him, that's intentional. And when we do see him, that's intentional. That God is doing something in this season that we do not understand. And even though right now it seems very, very challenging and you wonder where God is at and you're like, God, why would you let this person betray me? Why would you let them throw me in the furnace? Why would you let these all these different things that I did not see coming come against me all at the same time? Why? If I'm being obedient, if I'm trying to do what you want me to do, I'm fighting my flesh to be able to do what you've asked me to do. Why are you allowing all these things to happen? And family, I have the answer. It's because God trusts you with trouble. And the bigger the trouble, the more responsibility that you have, the bigger the blessing, the bigger the breakthrough, the bigger the calling, the bigger the purpose. I know it's hard to see in the moment, family. But I've learned that the bigger the trouble, the bigger the threat you are to the kingdom, the bigger the threat you are to what you what you're about to go into. Some of us just back down when trouble happens. We like all these things are happening and I don't see anybody else going through what I'm going through. And I'm trying to live right and I'm trying to do the right thing. But yet all these things, it was easier for me when I was living my own way. Or at least I think I did. At least it seems that way now that I'm in the midst of a storm. But I want, that's a, that's a lie. That's a lie from the pit of hell that wants to keep you right where you're at. That doesn't want you to touch purpose. That doesn't want you to make impact. Those are the voices that speak the loudest when trouble is around. And God is testing us, family. God is testing us. He's testing us with trouble. He's testing us with trials. Because he's he's perfecting something within us. So that when we have the responsibility, so that when we're blessed with the blessing, we can handle the backside. We can handle what comes with it. 
but God has to test us. It's like a refining fire. Y'all, I think about the story in the Old Testament with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, three Hebrew boys, and they are honoring God. They are, they are literally single handling them. Like no one else. They were, they were taken to a new land and they are trying to hold God's tenants, God's, God's com commands of how they're supposed to eat and conduct themselves. And they're doing that right. And they're doing the right thing and they're doing the right thing. And it's noticeable. People can see that they're different and because they are different, people have a problem with them because they're not doing what everybody else in their world should or are, are doing. They're not doing what popular culture is doing. They are living by a different cult, by a different standard. And it gets word back to the king. And the king's like, I want y'all to bow down and worship me. I need y'all. I need y'all to give me the worship. And they're like, uh, -uh look, uh, uh, we can't do that. And because of that, their lives are on the line. They're doing the right thing. When Daniel was going into the lion's den, he was fasting and praying and honoring God. And that made him a threat to the people around him. And so they started conspiring to try to figure out how to get rid of him because he kept elevating and he just had favor on his life. And they're like, why is this guy doing so well? Why is he experiencing so much favor? He doesn't worship the guy we worship. He's not doing what, what the king is asking him to do because the kings at that time want to be worshiped like gods. And in their culture, they were worshiped like gods. So for someone to worship or choose to worship the real God over this demi, whatever God that they have, this king that wants to present himself as a God was problematic. So Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, they're out here actually trying to follow God. They're doing the right thing. And yet they face trials. Yes, they find them. Yet they find themselves the target of attacks. Yet they find themselves with people, haters that are like, how do we get rid of them? We're tired of seeing them have all this blessing. We're tired of seeing them have all this favor. We don't like what we see. So they are faced with opposition, family, part of why you're facing this or why you're dealing with this. You're like, why don't people like me? Why don't people accept me? Why are people just not, not, not like, why don't they, why are they trying to find a reason to have an issue with me? My own family finding an issue with me. My own friends are finding an issue with me. Why are all these things shifting and changing? I don't think I've changed, but the people around me have. And the reality is, is because you're stepping into purpose. The, the reality is God is starting to have an impact on your life and your aura. When you start having a deeper connection with God, family, it there's an energy, there's a spirit that comes with it and it agitates people. You don't even know why people don't like you. They, they just don't like you. And that's exactly what's going on with Daniel and the three Hebrew boys. They don't have, there is no reason why you dislike me to the degree that you're trying to actually get rid of me. You're trying to actually unalive me because I'm different. Because I'm chosen. Y'all know it and y'all see it. And so Daniel has to be thrown into a lion's den. The three Hebrew boys. Gets thrown into a fiery furnace. And you're like, wait, 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 God. So they do the right thing. They're following, they're against all odds, against everybody around them is not. Everybody else is doing what culture is doing. Everybody else is doing what's popular and what's cool and what's accepted. They are going against the grain. And yet that makes them a target. And yet that makes them a threat. And now their lives are on the line. <clears throat> And some of us are feeling like, well, I'm going through this trial. I don't understand why I'm going through this when I'm trying to do the right thing, when I'm trying to be obedient. Well, that's exactly why. Because that is what is promised. In this world, in this life, you will have trials and tribula tribulations. That's what it says. That's the promise. We read that in the first verse, then John 16, 33. In this world, you will have tribulation. You're going to have problems. And the more you get closer to God, the more you get in touch with purpose, the more you start to understand that you are chosen, that you've got purpose, that there's an impact that you are supposed to make on the planet. And you start allowing some of these earthly wisdoms kind of drop off along the journey. Oh, yeah, you become a target for the for the for the other kingdom. And 
they try to assassinate your character and they try to take you out with their words and, and just make just find just any type of way to discredit you. Even the people that you think should love you the most. Find you a find you a threat or see you as a threat, and you're not a threat. But people's perception is their reality. And so you find, going back to the story, you find them and they're going and they're they're about to lose their lives. Three Hebrew boys are facing, they're facing death. They're about to be thrown into this fiery furnace. And they're like, listen, even if God doesn't show up, even if he doesn't. So they're saying, we know our God is real and we know he going to show up. And even if he doesn't, we still will honor him with our last breath. Now that's a different kind of faith. I don't know how many people would, even in the, in the, in the point of facing death are going to say, I'm still going to honor God with my last breath. And they get thrown into that fiery furnace. And you're like, wait, 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 God, hold up, hold up, hold up. I thought that if you're doing, if I'm doing the right thing, I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm honoring you. And I'm even making a speech that even if you don't show up, I'm still going to honor you. Why do I still get thrown into the fiery furnace? Why do I still end up in the lion's den? Why does Joseph still enter into the pit? Why does Jesus still got to get on the cross? Why does David still have to have to deal with Goliath and after that have to run for mo for a lot of his life for a period of time run away from Saul and then he has to go as he gets into the kingdom he's then now fighting all these different surrounding nations he's I mean he's a, he's a warrior you find him in in Psalms just fighting people and and in his story he's just it's like okay but but God I thought, thought I thought that if I'm following you and I'm doing the right thing I wouldn't have to face all these problems but the the, the reality family the reality of it all is that because you are chosen, because you've got a light on you, because there is an impact that you are supposed to make, you were created to make on the on this planet, the stakes are even higher. And what I've learned in this time, family, and I hope this is encouraging somebody, I hope this is encouraging somebody. But I know the attacks have just been one after the other, after the other, after the other. And it's hard to see God and you feel like giving up and you don't understand exactly what you're supposed to do next. And you feel like it's, it just seems so unfair. But you're a warrior. You're not just a regular warrior, you're a mighty one. God's put something on the inside of you that you can't get rid of if you wanted to. Now you can opt your way out of the perfect will of God, but I'm not going to let you. Yeah, let them talk. Yeah, let them have something to say. There is a God that has something for you on the other side. Let them do wrong by you. Let them leave you. Let them talk about you. Let them reject you. Let them betray you. Let them fire you. Let them let them do whatever they want to do. Let them do it, family. Let them lose you. If they left, they weren't meant to be a part of the journey that God has for you. I want you to know that the reason why these pillars in the Old Testament and Jesus, obviously the pillar of the New Testament, faced this, faced all these opposite, all this opposition, all of this, it was a greater story for God to get the glory. God wanted a bigger stage. God wanted to show undeniably that he exists, that he is real, that he is sovereign. Every single time when you read the Old Testament and he opens up a Red Sea and he does miraculous things, he wanted the people of Israel to know without a shadow of a doubt that there is a God and he exists and he is very, very real and he is not to be played with. 
Not at all. And that even though it seems like the cool thing to do is to do what everybody else around you is doing, I want you to know specifically that there is a real God. And so, yes, he allowed extreme, impossible situations to occur so that the people could see that were watching the entire situation. He made it so loud. He made everything that happened so loud to where these guys are facing execution. They are facing it. They are thrown into the fiery furnace. And the people that threw them into the fiery furnace actually did not survive it. Just throwing them in there. And when they look into the windows after just a couple seconds, because they're like, okay, they for sure, if the two people that threw them into the fiery furnace passed away, that's another message, y'all. Because those people that are throwing you into the fiery furnace, those people who are throwing you into the lion's den, with the intention of taking your life, with the intention of taking your reputation, with the intention, they're just throwing you in there. They want to see, they don't, they don't want to see you win. They don't want to see you progress. Those people end up digging the same thing that they were digging for you for themselves. That's Bible. Every time somebody try to do something with ill intention, they're reaping or they're sowing evil seeds. Guess what? The, the law is very clear, family. You reap what you sow. You trying to throw me into a pit, you end up throwing yourself into a pit. Every dagger you throw at me, you actually throw at yourself. And in the moment, family, it feels like these weapons are prospering. I'm sure these three Hebrew boys, as they're sitting and they get thrown into the fire first, they, they leading up, they're like, ooh, God, now I know you said the weapons don't prosper, but uh, they seem to be prospering right now. Like, we, we really about to get thrown up in this thing. I thought you were going to stop this. I thought you was going to derail this entire plan, but he didn't. They were thrown into the furnace. They felt the heat. They saw the people that threw them in there pass away as they're throwing them in there. And now everybody that's watching, everybody that's like, because, you know, back then, family, just this is just how I looked at it. The way that they they executed people was almost like a show. They thought that that was like some type of form of in entertainment to them. Which is really cruel, but they all watching. They all watching to see this go down. In one of the most inhumane ways. I mean, watching someone burn to their death is, is cruel and unusual. And yet there they are. Watching. All of them. The king, everybody in the kingdom watching. Because y'all, what I got to tell you is God likes a stage. God likes a stage. He's like, okay, no. I'm going to make this so loud. Everybody got to see it. The king, he got to watch this. He got to watch this. He want to be worshiped. I'm going to show him who the real God is. I'm going to show him who the real God is. So anyway, as they sit there and they're watching, they see, they, they look, somebody looks at the king and says, didn't you throw three dudes in there? It was three of them, right? King's like, yeah. Yeah, I threw, yeah. It was three. Uh, Meshach, right? Meshach. Yeah, three of them. Well, there's a fourth one in there with them. And they just moving around having a conversation. Like they not in a fiery furnace. And he's like, wait, what? And they look at, they like, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I can't believe my own eyes. We threw them in there because they was worshiping their God. But it looks like their God is allowing them to prosper in the most impossible situation we've ever seen. He, they are surviving in circumstances that were meant to take them out. I can't believe it. Get them out of there, y'all. Get them out of they get them out of the fiery furnace. And the king, the king who wanted to be worshipped, the king that was the, the reason why they was in there to begin with was because they were they refused to worship the king. Was like, wait, hold up. Your God is the real one. Whoever you worship is the God. We ain't never seen anything like this. We never thought, we have never seen people be thrown into a hot furnace that have 
that literally took the lives of the people that threw them in there. We've never seen this before. Your God has to be the real one. That's the point of family. I, I hope that hits somebody. I hope that hits somebody that was listening to this. It's a greater stage for God to get the glory. That the bigger, the louder, the more impossible. Those things are created specifically for God to get the glory. When they try to take you out, God said, listen, I got something for them. I know it feels like it's impossible. I know it's like, God, I would I would rather you do it this way. I'm sure the Hebrew boys were like, I would rather not even get into the furnace. Can you save us right before the furnace? But God said, no, I need you to go in the fiery furnace. No, Daniel, I need you to go in the lion's den. No, Joseph, I need you to go in the pit and then in the prison and then to the palace. I need these stories. Why? Because I know that there are people that are going to need encouragement in 2024 to know that they're the only reason, the only way we can get elevated, the only way that we can get promoted. First of all, God has to see that you are responsible. I can trust you with pain. I can trust you with trauma. I can trust you and know that you are going to conduct yourself and continue to give me the glory because the point of the pain and the point of the problem is for for me to get the glory. That's the whole point of all this. And if I can't trust you with small issues, I definitely can't trust you with bigger, major impact issues that the whole world will see. And at that time, when a king of that part of the world, it was like he was king of the world. They didn't, they, they didn't think of them as like just king in a country. They was like, this is, this is the superpower of this region. And I'm showing this superpower how real my God is. That was a bold, bold, bold move. And some of y'all, God can't even trust you with you not being able to find a parking spot at Target today. You already throwing your whole spirituality and allegiance right out the window. I want somebody that's listening today that some of the trials that you've faced, some of the rejection that you've had to face, some of the betrayals that you've had to face, some of the things that you have had to experience on a, on, on a bigger stage than you're comfortable with. I want you to know that just shows you how much God trusts you with trouble. I also want you to know that the louder it is, the bigger it is. It's for God to get the glory. Better story, greater story, greater trouble, greater testimony. Better story or a greater story for God to get the glory. The whole point of why he did what he did, the way he did it, for those whose heart. Now we not, we nobody was perfect, but their heart was towards God. They had a real relationship with God. God was like, listen, I'm not going to let no weapon prosper. Yeah, they may throw you in the fiery furnace, but you're not burning up and you won't even smell like smoke when you get out. And the world's going to see that the God that you serve is the real one. That everybody around here is worshiping social media and images and this and money and blah, 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 blah. Everybody else is worshiping all this stuff that really don't matter. I want you to stay consistent. I want you to stay focused on who the real God is because everybody getting lost in things that really don't matter. And I'm not going to let you do that. But if you get lost in that, I'm going to have to choose somebody else and I'm going to have to start trusting them with trials and tribulations because I want I want the world to see. That I am the real God. That Sam must serve the real God because I see how he has shown up for her. I see how she, how he has given her this platform and given her X, Y, and Z. And he's trusted her with such a situation. I want that to be said about me, family. I'm just, that's why I put myself in the text. And y'all, I ain't gonna lie to you. It's hard. 
It's hard to have that type of mentality when you're facing trouble. It's hard to have that type of mentality when you feel like you're alone. It's hard to have that mentality when you feel the spirit of negativity just all over you. But I'm going to ask you right now. I, I, I'm asking, just shake it off. I want you to shake it off with me right now. We shaking it off. And we said, devil, you don't have us today. Guess what? We shaking all this off. I'm not going to let you have another day of my sadness. I'm not going to let you have another day of my discouragement. I'm not going to let you have another day of my tears. Years. I'm not going to let you have another day of me just acting wild and feeding my flesh because at the end of the day, I'm hurting and I don't know what to do. I'm not going to let the enemy have another day. Today is your day because you created me for a purpose. Y'all, our life is but a vapor. We only, we only have so much time on this planet. I know that, you know, it seems like we're going to live forever. It seems like we're going to have decades upon decades upon decades, but that is just a vapor in the sense, in the grand scheme of time. And there are people that have done so much in short amount of time. They've impacted the world in short amount of time. You have to think about legacy, family, not just the right now. What will what will generations after you say about you? Long story short, I have I come from um, my mom is it was born in Ecuador and her great uncle is a very famous soccer player and he did other great things um, in that region. And they just put him on a quarter. So generations afterwards, I've never met this man, but I know who he is and I know the impact that he's made. And now I see him on the Ecuadorian quarter and I'm like, wow, I don't know this man, but I'm proud of him. What is your generation, two, three generations from now going to be able to say about you? What type of legacy are you created to make, family? I know that we can get lost in, like I said, social media culture, where we at, where we going, the vacations, this, that, and the third. What about legacy? We getting distracted by the right now that we're not thinking about thinking about what God has created us to do here. We only have so much time. And so, family, I want you right now. As you're shaking off all the things that you came in here with, all the anxiety, all the fear, all the doubt. I want to encourage those who feel like they're being surrounded by trouble. They're discouraged. It's one thing after the other, after the other. And you feel like you get in the head and then something else happens and you feel like you're slipping behind. I want you to know that you are chosen. That the... The, the very doubts that you have, the enemy is invested in you believing them because he wants you to give up. He wants you to stop fighting. He wants you to be defeated. Don't you dare let him. Don't you dare let him get up right now and start swinging. If you've got breath, you've got purpose. You've got life all throughout your bones. You better, you better get up and you better swing. And go, uh oh, she done woke up. Okay. Oh goodness. Well, I, I wasn't expecting that. I didn't, think, I didn't expect her to get up after that last thing. No, I'm going to keep getting up. I'm going to keep getting up. I'm going to keep swinging. You were created to be a fighter. You are a mighty warrior. You might not have felt that way when you first started listening to this podcast, but you use the sword of the spirit. You start understanding what the Bible is telling us. That no matter what you're facing, family, the harder it is, the bigger it is, the, the, the constant feeling of being attacked, feeling like you can't get ahead of it, it's just a sign that God can trust you with trouble. Or you may just be taking the same test because you haven't passed it. God keeps giving you, okay, well, I'm going to give you the same test until you pass it. We're going to be right here just on this level. But if you keep passing tests and the tests keep getting harder and harder, think about video games, family. The, the Every level gets harder. It's just like the game of life. Every level gets harder. And so it's seemingly getting harder. Okay, that's because God is like, okay, they're on the next level. I can trust them with a little bit more. I can trust them with a little bit more. 
So instead of focusing on what's around you, focusing on what is being seen, focusing on the problem, focus on the goal. What is what is the goal? The goal for the from the enemy is to get you off track, focused on everything around you so that you can't pass the test. Just like when Peter stepped out the boat, he was he was focused on Jesus. And as soon as he took his eyes off Jesus and it says in the scripture, he noticed the wind. He noticed the wind. You don't see when he felt the wind. He was starting to pay attention to his circumstances versus focusing on Jesus. And then he sank. Guys, keep your eyes to the hills to where your help comes from. And if it's really, really hard and the noise around, get, get, get alone, get quiet, get isolated. Start feeding your spirit and then get back in the ring and start swinging again. I want you to know that you're chosen, that God trusts you. He's trying to get you. He's refining you because there's a purpose you have to have and you have to have certain skills. You have to develop certain things within you. You have to understand yourself a little bit more and that's going to take risk. That's going to take getting uncomfortable. That's going to take, yeah, getting uncomfortable. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. That you can choose your way, opt your way out of the will of God by choosing envy and selfish ambition. There's a Bible verse that comes to mind as we close this today. It says, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness. And I'm creating streams in the desert. God is doing a new thing in this season. You're at, you're on a new level. And with that new level comes a new devil. Don't focus on that. Focus on passing the test. Keeping your eyes to the hills to where your help comes from. Pass the test. Keep on swinging. And I'm not saying swinging in physical terms. You take that sword out. You take your shield of faith and you take the sword of the spirit and you keep on going. I know it seems impossible. But luckily, we serve a God that specializes in the impossible. Let go and let God. Thank you for spending your time with us on Love Samantha Lee, the More Than Just Pretty podcast. It has been an honor and a privilege to share this space with you where we celebrate being unapologetically ourselves. I hope today's episode has encouraged you to embrace your own unique beauty and the beauty in others. Don't forget to follow us and join our community on social media. Share your journey and your insights, and let's continue this conversation. And until next time, remember, real beauty starts with you being true to yourself. I love you, family, and I'm going to talk to you soon. Childhood is filled with lots of big feelings. So is parenthood. Sometimes families can use help navigating those big feelings, the ones that lead to tantrums, worries, sleep challenges, and more. Bright Life Kids can help. Through our partnership with CalHOPE, all California families with kids ages 0 to 12 now get free behavioral health coaching online via live video sessions, secure chat, and more. Get all the tools for all the feels. Sign up for your free account at brightlife.kids. Childhood is filled with lots of big feelings. So is parenthood. Sometimes families can use help navigating those big feelings, the ones that lead to tantrums, worries, sleep challenges, and more. Bright Life Kids can help. Through our partnership with CalHOPE, all California families with kids ages 0 to 12 now get free behavioral health coaching online via live video sessions, secure chat, and more. Get all the tools for all the feels. Sign up for your free account at brightlife.kids.